In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning to you all. Good morning. And welcome to St. James's Church this morning. And it's indeed nice to be back here yet again. I think you have to put up with me for a few more weeks as well, I think. <laughs> well, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, the vicar is uh, on a course this week. That's why he can't be with us here today. Grace and peace be with you. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now we confess our sins to Almighty God, remembering all those things that we have done wrong, offering them to God, knowing that if we are sorry, He will forgive us. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. let us pray the collect merciful god you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is taken from the book of Exodus. A man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and said her, sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of he the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. One day, after Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and saw their forced labour. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew one of his kinsfolk. 
he looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting, and he said to the one who was in the wrong, Why do you strike your fellow Hebrew? He answered, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and settled in the land of Midian. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to read from part of Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up, even to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters, and the flood sweeps over me. As for me, I am poor and in misery. Your saving help, O God, will lift me up. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bulls with horns and hooves. The humble shall see and be glad. Who you seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his own who are in prison he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. Amen. Will you stand for the gospel, please? The Lord be with you. you. Listen to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Cherizim! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, It would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Would you sit down, please? Well, we've just heard a reading from the Exodus there, and a, a lovely story about uh, what, how Moses, if you like, um, stayed alive, I suppose. And can you remember, I can always remember it when I was a child. I don't know why, something sticks in my mind, and I can see this picture of this princess looking at this baby in this wicker basket. Could anyone think like that? Or is it just me? Uh, and very often, Charles and Heston. Oh, what, that, was that the road? No. What was that called? Um, was it Moses? No. The Ten Commandments. No. I can't remember. No. But yeah, it's, I, it, very often a lot of what um, certainly I think of the stories that we read in the Bible, I think in picture form. Then, and it must come from my childhood. When uh, I went to the National School down in Aberdeer, there were the old building, of course, there. Um, It's so small now, by the way. I used to play in that yard there. I had to think there. 
And we used to have scripture then. It was always known as scripture. R-E today, isn't it? But we had scripture. Um, and we had it for an hour every morning. And uh, we used to have some wonderful stories. And very often the Bible was read. And I, I have, uh, certainly in form, now we just think, I was probably about nine or ten. And Mrs. Evans was my teacher there. I mean, she's from Cliff Guide, I think she was. And a and, uh, great impression on me as a young boy then. But anyway, going back to what we heard earlier. Well, the Israelites are in slavery in Egypt. And Pharaoh has made it his policy to oppress them. Even to the point of having all newborn male Hebrew babies thrown into the Nile. But one has slipped through the cracks. The baby Moses was drawn out of the Nile, given to his own mother to be nursed and then raised as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Moses, however, is to be the earthly deliverer of the Hebrew people. So we now find God working out his plan to bring this about. The reading continued after that Moses has now grown up and he sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew. The text refers to the Hebrew as one of his kinsfolk. He has self-consciously taken on the identity of a Hebrew, and he wants to defend his people. The beating may have been with the intent to kill, or perhaps just to defend him, defend the Hebrew person there. But regardless, he kills the Egyptian to save the Hebrew. It is clear that this killing was not an accident or the product of spontaneous rage because he looked this way and that way. Moses, and then when he killed the man, he buried him in the sand. And he might have gotten away with it. But, and this would be the end of the story. But the next day, Moses sees two Hebrews this time struggling against each other. And this time, because they are, are of his people, Moses does not attack the one at fault, but says in disappointment, why do you strike your companion? And he answered, who made you a prince or a judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid. Moses had been found out. Someone must have seen him kill the Egyptian. But then this bombshell is dropped. One of the fighters said, Do you mean to kill me as you killed kill, kill that Egyptian? What a bombshell. Can you imagine how Moses felt? And someone, apparently an Israelite, told Pharaoh. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. Moses is now a fugitive. He flees from Pharaoh and goes to the land of Midian. Midian is a place on the other side of the Red Sea. To get there from Egypt, you have to traverse the Sinai Peninsula. Midian is south of modern Israel and Jordan, and it's now in today's Saudi Arabia. It pro probably wasn't the most prosperous of places but was apparently at least suitable for raising flocks and sheep, as the Bible explains le later. And as he flees by this route, he is a sense, in a sense, practices for the Exodus. When Moses is back 40 years later, he leads the people on a very similar route out of Egypt to the east, through Sinai and into Midian, and to the wilderness in that area. Going to Midian then gives him the knowledge of the route and the places through which he would later take the people on the Exodus. In the book of Acts, it tells us Moses is 40 years old at this point. His life can easily be divided into 40-year periods. He spends 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in Midian, and 40 years in the wilderness with the people of God. Who would have thought that Moses, who after all 
kill someone he was beating up, be, kill someone because he was beating up a fellow Hebrew, would go on to lead the people of Israel. Well, what can we learn from this? Well, I think what we can learn is that God chooses us. We have no option but to follow God. Despite his misdeeds and our misdeeds in the past, Moses, in killing someone, whether it was in self-defense or not, had committed a huge sin. And despite our sins from the past, we must be ready to call for the call of God to do his work here on earth. Despite all our baggage, despite all those times we have ignored God, we must be ready to heed his call. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we offer you our praise, acknowledging you as our God, ruler of all, the giver of life, the beginning and end of all things. Lord, in your mercy, we offer our hymns, our prayers and readings, our words and thoughts, our money, our lives, and our fellowship. We ask you to take what we bring and use it for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, we offer you the, the next week, the week that is coming, our work, and leisure, our commitments and responsibilities, our plans and programs. Take what we bring and use it to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, we offer you our lives, our hopes and fears, our gifts and interests, our time and energy. Take what we bring and use it for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, Sovereign God, may our every act and every day be lived in your power, through your love, to your praise and glory. In the name of Christ, Amen. We also remember at this time those people who are not well whether they are in hospital, waiting for operations, in care homes, or just still too worried to leave the house. We pray especially at this time for Melanie Griffiths. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for the repose of the souls of the recently departed. We pray especially for Erica Scott, Chung Hui Lee, Doreen Davis, Betty Devoy, and Kia Meyer Lecher. We also remember the anniversary of death at this time of Betty Godsell, Mark Thomas, Johnny Baker, Dorothy Jones, and Hilary Evans, and anyone else who is known to us. Lord, in your mercy, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Would you stand for the peace? The peace of the Lord be always with you. So we share a sign of peace. Would you like to sit while I prepare the altar? stand please we celebrate together the gifts and grace of God we take this bread we take this wine to follow Christ's example and to obey his commands the Lord be with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal word. Through him you created the universe and formed us men and women in your own image. You sent him to be our saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, Yeah. 
us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us, and feed on him in our hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The 
the blood of Christ. Would you stand, please? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. So we say together, God of truth. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.